Hey, what's up, everybody? Bring another review. This time is of the SH Figure Arts Star Wars, The Last Jedi, Captain Phasma. And we all know if you got the SH Figure Arts one previously, someone's going to tell you you shouldn't buy this one. That's up to you. Here I am today. I'm going to review it and show you the differences between the first and the second one. And you're going to decide for yourself at the end. <clears throat> now, for those of you that got the SH Figure Arts one, I know a lot of you were disappointed by the simple fact that Phasma did not have a cloth cape. That's one of the issues that currently plague us is that we are being spoiled with having cloth capes. Stuff like Mezco and Mafex will give you cloth capes and it'll be great for you. But in reality, not everyone can do that. It's not built for them. And I think that's totally fine. You can always mod one and create your own cloth cape. So I know you don't want to pay for it or have one yourself, but this is the love-hate relationship we have as a toy community. But anyway, the figure itself does not come with a cloth cape, but this one is uh, better articulated in terms of design. It's softer, it folds better, and it comes across the body a lot better. Um, the only issue being is that it's still uh, soft goods, so it doesn't hold. Unless you're going to do the hot water trick, or you're going to use the blow dryer to make it hold in place for a shot. It's going to be really annoying trying to do anything with Phasma that has to do with her being dynamic. And it kind of ruins it for you. But, like all things, you know, you pop off the head, and let's say you want to remove that, and you want to just pop it back on. You can always have a capeless Phasma, and it works just as well. It looks just as nice. And to me, it actually looks uh, a bit better. When you add the cloth cape, it definitely adds the, the dynamic that you want to it. But without it, I think she's great as a specialty trooper, a captain. It looks really well. The chromium armor looks totally good. And the silver is actually done differently. So I'm going to get to that in a second. But on the figure-wise, um, I love it. I love the first one. I'm going to actually love this one. The minor differences make it even better. I just wish, as all things, I'm disappointed that it doesn't have a cloth cape. Again, I'm spoiled about it, and that's about it. Now, in terms of articulation, this is what I call for the First Order Troopers uh, a Ninja Trooper because they give you a very great range of motion that originally you didn't get from the Star Wars stuff. So uh, once they kind of mastered this design, they've pretty much mass-produced it now, so you can actually do a lot of cool stuff as you can see here one thing about phasma though is that she's actually taller than a normal stormtrooper so you actually get the height she's actually closer to stuff like marvel legends and things like that and what's also cool is you can still pull the legs out a little to make her a bit taller as well as pull the torso up a little so she can still gain a tiny bit of height to just put her in that six inch range so i think that's really nice the shoulder pads actually connected to the arms so it's something you don't have to worry about hindering or worrying anything like that the range of motion is actually really great at the forearms and the legs. It's just overall great. Now, this Phasma is actually really dope because she now has a placement for her new weapon, which is a, a javelin-like thing. So just like the Ice King, you know, she's out here doing what she needs to do to pretty much uh, secure her spot on the Olympic team. When you remove the piece, it actually comes with the blade piece right here. So it is removable. You don't have to worry about it being there. Also, this time around... They actually added the holster pieces for the blaster. So this is actually really cool. But in case you don't want it to poke out with those prong pieces, they actually give you an option part for the blaster without it so she can actually hold the blaster without it. The only issue being is that they only give you one hand for her holding her weapons, and that's the right hand. So you have one for holding her smaller blaster and one for holding the larger blaster. <coughs> that one right hand that holds both. Uh, I can't remember if this is an E22 or... No, I, I'm not big on the Star Wars stuff enough. I'm one of those casual fans who really just enjoy it for what it is. So I'm sorry about that. But I know Star Wars guys know the name of this blaster. I actually like this one a lot. It is a larger chromium version of the normal First Order Stormtroopers one. It's really nice, actually. The handle still comes down, originally just like the other one. Really nice. But the javelin piece is actually what's really cool. Because even though it comes in a smaller design version... What's really nice is that they actually go ahead, give you the large version as well. And this is where things get really nice for me because uh, you can actually take upon a fighting style sort of like Kalik from Soul Calibur. Because from all the photos that I've seen with her in it, that's the kind of style that she takes. So you actually get three javelin pieces. You get one where she holds it in her tiny form, one where it actually grows, and one that she holds as a sidearm piece. So I'm going to place that uh, right back on there. There's a small, tiny port for it on the side. And as you can see, it doesn't hinder her articulation in any shape or form. And I like that. I like that a lot. I like that it doesn't hinder it. Hindrances are bad, you know. Let's not go for that. 
So I think that's really cool. So in terms of hands, she has hands for holding her javelin, which is two tiny hands. And I'm going to show you how easy it is. That's how easy it is to put it in there. So that's really dope. You come with two relaxed hands and the one hand for holding the blasters, which I showed you. I'm going to put her, I'm going to pop her cape back on real fast. Now, one thing I want to do is I'm going to compare her to the older one so you guys can see the differences and choose for yourself as you decide. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but uh, I'm going to blast the lights to show you that they're actually shining two different shades. This one is a more semi-gloss uh, silver. Well, this one actually looks closer to the design in the movie, and I like that a lot. I like that it, it definitely has the feel. The helmet is slightly different. The helmet is smaller and slightly redesigned here at the visor. Again, this is not something that you can really see, even if I put it in your face. They would almost look identical to you, but in person, they actually look different. The cape is actually different as well. It folds over here easily more over the chest to give you that better hook so that way it doesn't make her fall over as easily. And again, like I said, this one is actually a tiny bit taller than the, free, than the previous version. So I like that a lot. Also, what you can't notice is that at the bottom, as far as the legs, they're actually different designs. These one looks more like uh, an extra boot cut design, whereas this one's uh, straight up just long armor. It's really cool. Again, you'll also notice the difference on the side is that this one actually holds the holster for the blasters. Really dope stuff. So while they made it different enough, and it definitely feels different even though it looks the same, I'm really enjoying this a lot. Um, I like the Phasma. I like the first one. I'm going to enjoy the second one. Um, I really only kept my uh, Force Awakens stuff, and I probably pretty much got rid of everything else. But, uh, yeah. Now, in terms of what she's like compared to other characters, this is her to the previous Kylo Ren. It's SH Figuarts, but it has been modded. Here she is next to the Officer. As you can see, like I said, she's taller than the Officer. Here she is next to a Black Series Hasbro Finn, who is tiny. And I still have yet to get a proper ray because the Mayflex one is obviously too large. And that was my issue with it. So Phasma stands in the category of taller than other uh, SH Fig Arts characters, but not tall enough to be a Marvel Legend or any sort like that. So here she is next to a 1000 Toys Carb. And they're around a general height, so I know you can get a feel of it. She's still taller than that. And just in case you guys want to know, I'm going to find a Marvel Legend very quickly so you guys can uh, compare her to that as soon as I figure out where one is close enough. Oh, here we go. I have one in reaching range. So as you can see, she's actually in the range of Marvel Legends, which is really dope. So she's around that six-inch range. Like I said, she's a little taller. I know she should probably, I know you guys want her to be extra tall. But compared to Chewie and Han, she was around the same height. So she's not really that tall. She's just tall for you guys. So, yeah. In the meantime, guys, hope you enjoyed the photos at the end. Hope you be good. I hope you do good. I definitely hope that you're drinking your water. Later.